Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a watch from the company Hamilton. Hamilton have actually been around for quite a few years. I think 1892 they started. It was originally an American company but now they're Swiss owned. This one here has come courtesy of my friend Steve over at Watch Obsession on Instagram. If you're into your photography and watches, really worth checking his site out as he has many great pictures. So, this one for Hamilton. This is a Kharki model, one of their field watches. And this watch here is 42mm by 11.9, 11.8 thick. So it's actually quite a slim watch. It's a slim watch, but the lug to lug is almost 53mm. So it's strange, you have this quite slim watch, but it is quite large with those lugs there. So a lot being what you'd think. The actual bracelet size on this or lug width is 22 mil. Now, this watch here, it's a field style watch. If we zoom into the dial there, it's got a yeah, relatively interesting dial. We have the cathedral style hands. I like the fact that they go all the way out to the minute track. I like this red tip on the end of a second hand here. But you do also have on this the 24 hour indices in the center and where the normal hour markers around the side. Now, one small problem I find with this is the date window at three o'clock because of the size of the movement is pushed inboard and you lose this symmetry with the actual uh, 24 hour markers going around the track. So you can see a 13, 14, and then 15s on the inside, 16. I feel it's a shame you have this blanked off space there. You know, it's, it's a shame they couldn't have moved that further out. I know why, obviously it's quite an expensive thing to do. And this watch being that they're around about $400. I think you are getting a lot of watch for the money. It's just that is a little bit of a disappointment. It's a little bit of a shame. One thing I should also point out, and it's, not good is the loom on this watch isn't the best now it may seem like i'm having a go at this watch straight away but i think for 400 dollars, it's a hell of a lot of watch so yeah yeah don't worry about it too much the loom isn't amazing it's definitely not a strong point we do have a sapphire crystal on this watch and it is ever so slightly domed it's got a lovely dome to it so that is that is actually quite nice but there's no ar coating as you can see i'm picking up reflections everywhere but that is a little bit of a shame the actual case as you get further out from it we have this lovely um polishing work all the way around here and it has been executed quite well you have radial brushing on the top you have this um brush brushwork along here I think they've done a really nice job of that. The actual back of the watch, let me zoom out here. I pull this NATO off. You have a lovely view of the movement from this screw down case back. And I say, you can see there, it's a 100 meter water resistant. And you get a look at that rather interesting movement. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting because it's an in-house movement. It's for H10, 25 joule. It's actually got an 80 hour power reserve, which is quite phenomenal. But by getting that 80 hour power reserve, they've knocked the frequency down to 21,600 Hertz. So you are getting six beats per second. And why I say that is because this is actually based on the, it's also known I think as a an ETA movement, CO, I think it's CO711. You can actually get the, I think they're called Powermatic 80. And you can actually get a chronometer spec version of this watch. But again, it goes further back than that. It's actually, that is based on an ETA, ETA 2824. And as we all know, that movement is a 28,800 hertz. So it looks like they've slowly took away, you know, a few of the beats to drop it down to six beats to get it to the um, 80 hour power reserve, which is pretty impressive, to be fair. 
and you can see it at first when I looked on the back of this I thought oh, it looks like a bead blasted finished ETH 2024 but the bridge what the hairspring is on is slightly different and that's this bit here it is different now this got me thinking because normally you'd have your screw there for adjusting and regulating the time there isn't on this so turns out this you have to send off to get it regulated so it's not something someone like me who's just interested in watches would be more than happy to take back off and regulate this watch i wouldn't be able to do that which is a little bit of a shame really but i say it's good and bad you get the nice sort of in-house movement with an extra long power power reserve but you lose the ability for you to you know, to regulate it, which for nine times out of 10 will not affect anyone. But if you're like me and you do like to regulate your watches, then you can't actually do that, which is a little bit of a shame. Now, as you can see, we have a signed crown air polished and it's not screwed down. So you can hear the winding going on there, but it's quite a satisfying wind on this actually. It's not bad at all. So I should also point out that rotor is also quite nice. Let's put NATO back on there. So I say it's a it's a nice watch, and I think for four hundred uh, US, you're getting a lot of watch. Yeah, I've I've even looked around; you can get it a little bit cheaper here and there. And I think for the price, wow, yeah, really is a lot. You know, you're getting a nice yeah, you know, a nice bit of um watch case and movement for that price. Now let me put this on my wrist so you get an idea how it actually looks. Let me do this off camera, it's a tad bit easier. My wrist size is a fraction over seven inches. This is one of those watches where I feel you could really mess around with straps and bracelets or, or whatever. My friend Steve really does like his NATO, so um, yeah, as we have it on this NATO here. Now you can see it's a nice size, but these lugs are long, so Bear that in mind, even though even though it's only a 42 millimeter watch, the lugs are quite big. So if you have got slim wrists, this may not be the watch for you. But I love the fact that it's nice and slim. This is the kind of watch you could wear every day, no problem at all. So for the money, I think you are getting a lot. The only things I say positives, you're getting that rather funky movement. You're getting a slim nicely executed case you're um getting a proper you know watch brand with history really and, and i say so for that money it's pretty damn impressive negatives even though it's a plus it's also a negative that movement because it is a little bit awkward if it does need regulating you do have to send it off the date window could be better the loom and i say it won't be for everyone being that these are quite big Anyway, so there you go. Uh, sort of like mixed bag with this one. I think it's still standby. You are getting a heck of a lot of watch. I'm just being super fussy, but hey, that's why you watch these videos. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe out there and I will see you at the next review. All the best. Bye.